this lecture. Uh, so first of all, a bit of uh, advertising. The LRC, which means the library, is having a user survey. And uh, you are invited to contribute to that survey and maybe win an iPad. Okay. And apart from winning an iPad, I think it's a good idea to contribute because basically you are going to be in Kingston for at least three years. So Kingston is your new home. So you need to, to make sure that you have the, the home you, you wish. Okay, so is there some... That's the opportunity to have your voice heard so that eventually things are going to change. Okay, so please go to that link, win an iPad, and provide your, your opinion of what you think the LRC is good at and what I could be improved. Um, today is the first lecture of a series of two about uh, mobile apps. Okay, so you have already understood that very quickly you will be building your own mobile app. So for those two lectures, I've had uh, some help from uh, Dr. Nada Philip, who's there, and who is uh, an expert in uh, mobile technology, doing uh, research at uh, international level. And one of her PhD students, Rish Dishti, who is doing a PhD on mobile technology as well. So I will leave you in the hands of two great specialists of, uh, of the topic. So today I'm just going to give you the, the feedback for last week's uh, activity, and then I will leave the floor to, to both of them. Okay? And next week, that will be them as well. And I will be back, back afterwards. Uh, okay, so, so with these uh, mobile apps, we are starting a new theme, the Making Things theme. So I know that some of you have already enjoyed the PHP, the opportunity to build something, to do a bit of programming. So what we'll be doing in this uh, mobile app things will be quite similar. So if you have PHP, you will enjoy that as well. Um, okay, feedback, if we look at the first six activities, now that we are moving within the first uh, teaching block, so we can see that we have 160 students who are doing quite well, submitting the, the activities regularly, so well done to, to these 160 ones. Uh, however, I've noticed that fewer and fewer students submit within the one week deadline, which means that fewer have the opportunity to get feedback and submit again if it was not good enough. Okay. So that's one of the issues. The other, the other issue is, if I'm not getting questions, I cannot give to the class hints about to do the activity. Okay, so the number of feedback that I can address is getting reduced every week. It's less work for me, but it's not as good for you. Yeah. Uh, so the activity five, the deadline is in two weeks' time. Okay, because we had one week of break, which means that now we have an extra week for activities. So hopefully that will help people to, to catch up. Okay, because so far I've received only 79 submissions. So not even half. Okay. Hopefully in two weeks time I will get again a high number close to 200. Okay, so a bit of feedback. So I've got questions and I've got comments. Okay, so I'm going to share that with you. So some people said that they really enjoyed it. Good exercise, they have learned something really new, useful and they really engage in the activity. So. That's great. Um, other people who enjoyed it. People who found that it was quite tough. Okay, so we are moving in the year. Okay, so obviously we had easy activities at the beginning, and it's getting harder and harder as you would expect. Um, web prototyping, in particular, you should uh, should remind you that at the end of the year, 
20% of the mark will be about one of your web where I would have expected you to use all the techniques that we have seen during the year and more. Okay. So it's a really important uh, activity. It's tough, but the person who found it hard did it well. Okay, so maybe you will need to spend a bit more time than for the others, but it's a good investment, you will learn a lot, and you will be on course for becoming a, an IT professional. Um, some people have more practical questions. They said, okay, PHP is great. Why am I, am I still uh, bothering having HTML pages? That's a good question. And the answer is, I agree. So feel free to have your website only with PHP pages. Okay? And it's not because it's PHP that it has to be dynamic. An HTML page using the, the suffix PHP is a PHP page. Okay? So you can move to the PHP world very, uh, very easily. Uh, so do we need to have HTML page? Actually not. Okay, you can move to PHP. Um, some people wanted, they were not very happy because they were um, <coughs> having their converters, for example, type a number, press submit, and the page had to be reloaded. Okay? So would it be possible to get the result directly <coughs> on the page? And uh, fortunately, it's not possible with PHP. As you have understood, your browser cannot understand PHP. Each time you do a request, you change something, it is sent to the, uh, to the server, which has a PHP engine, which is going to analyze the PHP and eventually uh, co uh, convert everything into an HTML format, which will be sent to your web browser. Okay? So you always need to go back to the server each time you are making some changes. Okay? So that's one of the strengths of PHP as we discussed uh, last week. So what is the solution if you want something interactive where you don't need to refresh your, your page? You can use JavaScript. Okay. Please come in quickly. Uh, I don't think I'm going to... Or you get out. Okay. There's no tourist here. <laughs> complicated. No, it's not complicated. You shut up or you get out. Okay? You understand me? Being serious. I'm serious. Have some manners. You heard me. Yeah. We have all heard you. You will get troubles. Trouble with what? It's not an attitude in no, a you're class. Say, you're telling me to shut up. What are they yeah, you're not respecting the class. You're interrupting the class. I don't want to interrupt the class anyway. That's what you have done. I came here to learn. <coughs> okay, so some people said that uh, the activity was nice. Okay, so a lot of people will really enjoy the activity. And some people will find it difficult. Okay, but uh, I think everybody who tried eventually managed to get a successful uh, outcome. Uh, except one person who started to do some work, managed to do half of the activity, and then had some issues in uh, integrating uh, some more advanced PHP uh, code. So as I said, uh, as he said, you know, more practice is needed. Yeah, you are not going to become uh, a specialist of PHP overnight. Okay, but uh, more practice and take advantage of your mentor. Okay, so every week I say, please use your mentor. They have time, they are paid to help you with technical problems. So there's no point emailing me. Okay, I cannot deal with 200 students, it's too much work. And also, the mentor can sit next to you, next to your computer, and look at your code. Okay, so if you are not sure about uh, what, uh, who your mentor is, please send me an email and I will tell you, okay? So, I didn't get more questions than that. 
Okay, as I said, very few people contributed, and the one who contributed did well. So what I want to do is to give you a few examples of what they have done, and they have done it well. Okay, so let's look at this first PHP uh, example. Okay, so as I said, we wanted a, a converter of some sort. So this person has done a converter from British pounds to, I guess, American dollars. So technically, it's doing the job. Uh, the person got the maximal, the maximal mark. However, you, should, you need to, to think about it, that the conversion rates are changing every day if not every hour, okay? So if you are using a fixed formula, your conversion rate is maybe correct for today, it's not really going to be correct tomorrow, okay? So as an application that you are offering on your web page is not great, okay? It's likely to give you the wrong numbers. Uh, obviously, if you are using PHP, and we will see that later in the year, you can collect the current uh, conversion rate from a database. Okay? But you need to update this value. You cannot hard code it in, a, in your PHP code. Okay? But technically it's fine and all the points have been uh, given. Um, so here I have a temperature converter. So from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So again, <coughs> it's doing uh, nicely the job centimeter to inchi inches maybe too many digits there but that's okay um, what else do we have yeah something a bit more advanced okay so first we have how to convert stones into kilos here we can Wow. <laughs> so it's work in progress, so we are not going to worry too much about that. And then the more advanced PHP code that this person has uh, integrated is a password generator. Okay, so you can decide if you want uh, capital letters or not, numbers, and so on. And automatically they create a password for you. Okay. So again, it's full mark. You know, the job has been done very well. Um, this one also I liked. So still, you have some converters: Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. And also, they have added a kind of a PHP program which all allows to do uh, polls, okay? So you can choose what is your favorite color. Let's put it green. And you have a nice uh, representation which shows you for which color people have voted, okay? So obviously that's a bit more advanced than what we have seen in the class, but by now, write PHP code from the website I mentioned last time, you can integrate that to a uh, without too much effort. Um, what else? And finally, we have this one. Yeah, so this one had a little menu, so you could choose if you wanted to go from Fahrenheit or from Celsius. So I uh, added a level of complexity, and it's providing you the, the conversion, and it's implemented as well the counter. So here, 34 people, have been to that page, now it's 35, okay? So, <coughs> excellent work. So, as I said, very few people have done it, but most people have done it very well, okay? So, if you haven't done it yet, please give it a go. If you have technical issues, because there is a, a programming element, please contact your mentor, they are the best person to, to allow you to 
to have to deal with any issue. <laughs> okay, so that's all for me today. Now I leave the stage to Dr. Philip and this trip. regarding today's lecture and for tomorrow or next week or anything related to this topic please uh, contact me and by email and you can set up a meeting and discuss whatever you uh, want to discuss in this area. I just want to mention something else. Uh, my um, you know, work is in the area of, you know, as we see, as you can tell, it's an I in ICT. Basically one of the, one of the topics that I work in is developing mobile apps. And the area that I'm developing it for, or the area that I work, my researcher is in health, to develop applications, healthcare applications. And as you can see, um, we're all moving towards mobile. So all the patients at home, they've got mobile. So you, might, you, can, you can develop something for them to access <coughs> their, um, to manage their diseases or whatever you want. So just to, just to tell you what's my specialty. Okay, and uh, first of all, um, what we're going to cover this week and next week is we'll introduce you to um, um, apps development. First, we will talk about web app developments, and next week we will talk about, we'll continue our lecture on web apps, and we will touch on Android app developments. And as you can see, it's a, bit, it's a big topic. I mean, we, we cannot cover it in two weeks. So what we're going to do in the, in the in today and next week, just to introduce you to the material, introduce you to some learning material that you can follow and um, you know develop um, if you want to develop an app uh, based on this. <coughs> so we'll set. We'll set you, we'll, for first we'll talk about um, our app and uh, we will um, introduce uh, a website called Code Academy. Have you heard of Code Academy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you done some activities so far in this module? Mm -hmm. Okay then, so you are familiar with Code Academy and how it works. One of the um, um, topics or technology that you can learn in, uh, by that uh, website is um, related to developing apps using based on web. So uh, you will le you can learn from that HTML5, uh, CSS, and JavaScript, which and then also the uh, J Mobile Query, uh, J Query Mobile, which you will, um, which you need to which you need to develop a web application, a web mobile web application. Okay and. Linda, 
yeah. of course we have it here. Uh, Linda uh, is uh, teaching you um, technologies or whatever you want uh, related to, to your um, any 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 topic um, via video. So you have some videos you can uh, view about uh, any particular topic. <coughs> Um, so today we're going just to touch on um, some HTML, CSS, I'm sure that you've done it just for you go through it a little bit, some JavaScript, and uh, then we'll end up with um, uh, jQuery Mobile, and with these four technologies we can develop our um, app. <coughs> can anybody tell me what's the difference between a web app and a native app? Runs Have you come browser. across? Runs yeah. in the browser? Sorry? That it runs in a browser? Uh, the web app. Yeah. Yes. And what is this, you know, what is the benefit of that? Everyone can use it. What do you mean by everyone? Most people can use it. What about devices? Do you mean them it can be run on more all the devices, uh, hopefully. So you develop it once, and it can be run on an iPhone, on a, on a laptop, on a desktop on an iPhone, an iPad, tablets, Android, uh, Blackberry, or whatever. So you develop it once using some special technology. As I said, it is HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript, uh, jQuery Mobile. Develop it once, and everybody can use it on different devices. Native apps? Sorry? We have a different version for every smartphone. We have for iOS, we have for Android, and so on. So basically, it's native as it is, uh, as, a, as the name is specified. Um, you develop it for that particular device. So if you want to develop it on iPhone, you have to develop it uh, on the operating system, which is iOS. So it's got a special language, C hash. You have to develop it in that language. Mm -hmm. And only that app can be displayed on iPhone. You cannot display it on Android. If you want to develop it for Android, then you have to develop it by, uh, according to the Android uh, operating system and um, uh, develop it using Java and so on. Whatever you develop for Android, you cannot display it on iPhone and so on. So there is the native app, you develop it only for that particular device and you have the web app, you develop it once and you can use it on many devices. Okay? Um, also, uh, we will talk about the need of a text editor. Using developing any, line, uh, any program, you need a text editor. What text editor are you using currently? Not hard plus plus. Perfect. This is uh, the one that we suggest you use here. Uh, because of all the benefit that you get from there. It's not only you editing and writing your code, also it corrects for you some syntax and so on. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, this is basically the outline uh, for today. And, uh, okay. To develop more web apps, uh, you need uh, some technology in place uh, to start developing. You need uh, to install a web server. Uh, so we use uh, XAMPP for that. Have you done? Have you used that before? Yeah. Okay. Via this uh, course. Yeah. Okay then. So you need that because, as the name implies, is a web app. <coughs> it would be hosted in a web. So you need a server there. And for that server, I mean, to run your app, uh, your your app in the web, you need uh, you need XAMPP because it you gives you. Um, uh, you know, it gives you, it's, um, it's a platform that gives you all you need to develop uh, a web application uh, in terms of CHP and MS MySQL and so on. So it's got everything, the PHP and MySQL, <coughs> MySQL all together in one place allows you to develop uh, that web application. As I said, um, uh, uh, text editor, um, not Pascal, plus plus, perfect. Um, you need um, HTML. And uh, you, need, um, you need HTML because web app, when you develop it, is based on HTML. So as you will see, the code is HTML. However, to add the interactivity, like for example, press a button should do something, or um, adding the colors to the page and so on, we'll talk about it later. But basically, it's an HTML. The structure will be the same as, as an HTML. 
you, you say that you've done HTML here in this course. If you need to have more information about it or study it a little bit more, go there. I mean, Cat Academy is a perfect place to do that. Have you used W3 schools? Yeah. Absolutely. There's another uh, resources that you can go and, you know, find just take it step by step learning HTML. We know HTML is all about the tags, tags, headings, H1, H2, H3. You have the paragraph, you have um, the anchor, you want to add the image, and unlisted um, um, div and span and so on. Are you aware of all these tags? Yes. Okay then? You all need it when you develop our um, app here. And also, to learn CSS, also, I, I believe you've done it before in this uh, course. Um, why we need CSS? Styling. Sorry? Styling. Styling. You need to style your page because HTML by itself is only gives you the structure. Paragraphs, um, break there, um, an image or a list or just a structure, a static structure. If you want to add colors into it, what they've done, they removed that um, let's say um, bird from the HTML and put it in the CSS. So you can put all your styles here and um, HTML and CSS when you run it together all the styles will apply to that particular uh, like paragraph you want to style and so on. So it's basically styling your uh, HTML um, files by adding colors, changing the font um, and so on. HTML and CSS by itself, it's okay. We have the structure, we have the, um, uh, the presentation aspect into it, styling. Uh, now we need to add some sort of interactivity into it, interactive, to make it interactive, like press a button or submit a form or whatever, going from one page to another. You need to add to that, to your page, such capability so it can be dynamic. So you can, you can use uh, JavaScript, which provides you with some um, libraries. Again, you embed it within the body of your, not the body, within the, within the HTML code. We'll show you as an example. So you add some uh, libraries from JavaScript that allows you to have this interactivity on your page. Okay? So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And to allow you to run your code on many devices, you just said it. Yeah? Up to now, it's only a web application. Mm -hmm. To allow uh, this capability to run on any device, then you need some extra bit there, which is called JQ Mobile, where uh, it has some JavaScript. And then, again, there are JavaScript libraries. It allows you, it allows your code to run on different devices. OK? So if it is a small phone, it's a tablet, and so on. Is it iOS? Is it um, Android? And so on. It, it gives you this capability. So this is basically what you need to have or to develop a web. You need all this technology: the server to host it, and the editor, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery Mobile. With all of this, you can develop a web, uh, a mobile web application. Okay. Now, uh, uh, I said you need all of this. Through my slides, we go some of to some of the theory, like um, just static slide. I'm just going to show an example, and then Drishti will come over and show you some examples. Basically, just a beginning for you to 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 move on and develop. I'm sure you said you've got it, you've got the exam. If you don't, then you need to download it uh, from uh, these links. It provides you, as I say, um, <coughs> installs you some sort of an Apache distribution containing all MySQL, nice PHP, and um, that you will need to lock your application, your web application. 
Taxi this up, I'm not going to repeat that. Again, not plus plus, you can have it. And to give you to write your code. Um, you've done HTML, again, um, it's a famous body or for an HTML. Yes, do I need to go through this? Yeah. So basically, your HTML code, the code, the structure goes here. And anything to do with the styles, the JavaScript goes in here. Or the jQuery stuff goes in here in the heading. Okay, but it's all in one HTML file. Again, I found that W3 schools, very good to go and learn. And also you have uh, the Linda, a little bit, a bit more of an, another example here, just to show you the different you need to play around to understand, you know, uh, I will, I, you've got it, you've done it before in this, uh, uh, this module, so I'm not going to go into details this. CSS, again, styling different um, tags that you have in your, um, in your web page, and um, again, I think I believe you've done it. So, again, again a, a good uh, place to go and learn it and have some more um, uh, input here. We have the W3 School and the Code Academy. Let's start the Code Academy. Code Academy, uh, I believe you've used it before, so there's no need. I go here and uh, show you how it works. But uh, just I left it here because you needed to learn the different, um, like if you want to learn some more, um, a little bit more on HTML or CSS or JavaScript, which is, have you done JavaScript before? No. You've done JavaScript before? Yeah. So you, no. Not here, not in this module. Okay then. So again, a good place to do that is the W3 School and the Code Academy um, as well. J Curie Mobile as again Code Academy and W3 Schools. Very good um, place to go and uh, learn about it. So not HTML, CSS. I know you finished with it, but other things. Academy. As you will notice from your activity, your activity will be about using Code Academy uh, to earn, um, um, you know, to earn some points. And uh, for that, you need to look at either HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. So maybe you say, I know HTML, I know CSS. I better spend these points or gain some points in JavaScript. So you go through the JavaScript tutorial or. Um, steps to learn and get uh, your uh, you know, points for your uh, activity. For your uh, activity. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned today and uh, next week is not good enough. It's not enough to teach you everything about revenue. There's no time for it. So what we say, we say, okay, we'll introduce you about what are the technology for that, give you some examples, and leave you for this, maybe this week, for the code academy, maybe to learn about Java or JQ in mobile. And um, there are lots of uh, tutorials out there to learn from, lots of uh, forums. You can post your questions and get some answers. Uh, you can add uh, debugging on your code and get some help. You can ask us, come back to us and ask us. Of course, you have Linda here, and I found out that they have lots of videos uh, there about uh, developing uh, web applications. And um, not sure to play it here. Okay. So, for example, here on mobile apps, there are many, uh, many uh, videos that you can uh, look at and. Uh, uh, you know, watch and learn from it on how to develop. Uh, yeah. So, this is something about iOS and 
So this very rich uh, uh, website, which of resources that are very useful uh, to build uh, web application or Android application or iOS application and so on. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, for JavaScript, uh, basically you have, for example, you have um, uh, a button there. You want to press it and you want to have something happen when you press it. As you've seen from the example using PHP, here you can have HTML, some CSS, with a Java code. When you press one button, can do something for you. So for example, here and um, there is, um, uh, you know, there is this action. Is when you click on it, display date. What's the display date between two brackets? It's a library. It's, um, it's a library that you need. How do you get that library? Is via your JavaScript. So script here stands for the JavaScript. So the function is display date. So you're getting the function. JavaScript is with lots of libraries that you can get display date, time, many other things. How do you find about it? Again, W3Schools is a very good um, resource to go through and see what are the libraries that I can benefit from. It's got everything you can think of to act on. Um. <coughs> so for example, displaying the lab, displaying a date, so it's called display date, it goes and uh, get your date, your date for you. Press on the button and the date displayed there. Yeah? So with this, you are adding, again, can you see, is a same HTML code. You've got the HTML here. You added some interactivity here. You, for that, you needed the JavaScript. You need, you need to write a small script there in the head there uh, to display uh, the date for you. OK? If you say that JavaScript is similar to Java, I would say no. It's not. It's not Java. It's good. Commands. Yeah. So um, um, so basically, it's very powerful because um, it's your HTML code here. To add interactivity, you can just add your libraries, your scripts here, and call them. By including that automatically, when you want to make display date, you've got it. You've got it there as a function. Call it and display the date. <coughs> uh, I mentioned about uh, JQ Mobile. Again, as I said, instead of you going there and you have, you need to develop something for Android or Blackberry, they are both written in Java. If you want to develop something in <coughs> iOS, you need to develop <coughs> Objective-C. If you want to develop something on Windows Phone, you need to see hash and .NET and so on. So instead of developing the same app three times, for example, for Android, for iOS, for Windows, you can develop it once using web um, apps. Um, using this, the technology that I just we just talked about, and um, you can run it on any other device later. Okay. okay. So instead of that, as I said, how do you do that? You've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's not enough. You need jQuery Mobile to allow you to create this uh, app that can run on many devices. Okay. Again special libraries, like the JavaScript, there that you need to include it in your HTML code in the head. Once you include it there, then you can, you can call many libraries from that, uh, from, uh, from that uh, uh, jQuery script that you add in the head. Okay? That's what I wanted to say. So basically, J uh, JQ Mobile is a framework for creating a mobile web application. That's what it is. 
If you look at this example, I've got, I've got this from the W3 school. So basically, you have here a bit of bit of code. I've got something um, underneath, but, but you can't get it from the W3 school. Um, so you have like here three sections. You have the welcome uh, to my home page. You have welcome, and then you have the footer text there. Um, so here we have, uh, in the first uh, uh, div here, we have the welcome to my, uh, my home page. You, you put it in one div there. And you have another one uh, called welcome. Here, a paragraph there called welcome. And we have another one for the footer text there, but I'm not showing that. It just I took it from the um, W3 schools. Once you go there, it's the first exercise that you can get there. Okay. How the jQuery play a role here? Here, you need to include in the header, in there, you need to include the following uh, bits. Uh, first of all, is something called tag uh, meta, name, viewport, content with device with initial scale one. You need to include that. This will allow your code <coughs> to take the width of your device. So by including the first tag there, whatever you are developing there to take the width of your device, whatever the device that you are <coughs> running. So this is important. Without it, you know, the content will be displayed not according to the device that you don't display. So this is the first thing that you need to include in your, um, J from, the, from the point of view of the JQ mobile. And also, <coughs> you have uh, special uh, styles that for JQ the mobile. And for that, you need to have a tag, which is link um, uh, style sheets. And is taking you to some sort of, of a library here for JQ the mobile um, called, this is the name, CSS, because it gives you, it allows you to use all the styles that um, related to jQuery Mobile to develop. So in any jQuery program, you need to include that library for the CSS. So first one was to do, to allow you to view the content on any device. That's very important to include it. Second one is for the CSS. And you have uh, the other two scripts here uh, for uh, the jQuery Mobiles to implement. Other, if you can see, is JavaScript. These are libraries for JavaScript. Uh, within that, you can um, you can uh, uh, call uh, any library. They are JavaScript, but they are related to the JQuery mobile. So four things you need to include in the heads. Straightforward. Once you are developing a web app, and the four things are these, which is the meta, the styles, and these two scripts. This is a must. Whatever you're doing, this is a must. Once you do that, then you are in that environment of developing a JQuery mobile um, page. But at the end of the day, can you see it's an HTML file at the end? With a bit of JavaScript, with a bit of JQuery mobile, which is, yeah? With that, you can develop your uh, system. OK? Why do you think we need the MySQL then here? A question. Sorry? Absolutely. You may ask this question. Say, why do I need the MySQL for your database? Maybe you want to store, retrieve stuff. So you need it. Yeah? But this one is for you as a web page, as an interface to your server. That interface is not a web application. It's a web app mobile web app, yeah, that you can view it here on a laptop, but I can view it on any other phone. Your activity for next week, when is the deadline for this? 
Sorry? Why is it like with two deadlines? One in a week, one in a month. Why is one in a month? There's one for one for feedback and one in a month for the final deadline. Okay. So basically this is your next uh, activity that you're going to go to the Code Academy website and uh, look at some material and uh, uh, add some uh, points here, batch 25 points, it says here, it should be like around one to two hours. Uh, register with the site, I'm sure you're registered, and take the courses in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and we leave it up to you. If you don't want to have HTML and CSS, you say, I've got it, or something like that, you can do it on JavaScript. Whatever. All we need from you is the uh, 25 points. Yeah? Anyway, read the guidelines for your activity and um, give us uh, do, do, uh, you know, do the activity. And we'll give you some feedback about it. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes. You know the jQuery mobile? What happens if there's like no internet connection? When? When? The jQuery, the mobile app, you said. Yeah. Like, what happens if there's no internet connection? When? You run, when you run the application? Yeah, it will not work. So, like, that's a downside. You side. have, of course, you have to have uh, your uh, mobile connection. Of course, there is uh, something called Ajax. You not use it for your JQ mobile, but there is something called Ajax where it uh, only gets you the bits that change your page. It will not reload the page for you. So there is more into it that you use, you know, the usage of the mind of other technology, Ajax, for example, which I didn't mention here. I just gave you the minimum. Okay? Okay. So let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at uh, you know some some examples. Really, I'm not saying um, a sophisticated example or complex, but some example about what I just said because I didn't look at the platform. Uh, itself and run some uh, programs with you, but I will later just to go through these examples. Okay. Maybe at the end she will show you like a web app that we developed recently for for a project. So just to show you how it So I'll just give you some demos, just like whatever we've already explained to you earlier. Some of you are already familiar with XAMPP, but some of you, I'm not sure you've been using it before. Uh, I'm just going to introduce you what is XAMPP, how you have to download it, to install it on your local machine. XAMPP is actually something, it's like a local server. 
So you don't really now, for at the moment, you don't really need a server. Even if Uni provides you with a server, you all have a dedicated server from the student net. But it's easier if you have Xamp installed on your PC. It includes Apache, PHP, MySQL. Even if you have database, you wanted to connect any kind of websites. So you have uh, PHP installed as well. And SQL, it looks exactly the same interface as if you had to install PHP separately. So that makes it, makes it really easy for you guys to start um, developing any website. So it applies to websites, to mobile sites, to anything with um, anything dealing with HTML. So that's a, w a good way to start with. So after installing Xamp, um, which we've, got, we've given you the, the link before in, um, in the slides, so once you install it, you will be getting um, a window that will appear will be similar like to this one. So first of all, you have to start Apache. You will have to start MySQL in case you're dealing with, like I said earlier, with databases, which we don't have for this um, demo, but I'm just going to start it for you. FileZilla is uh, basically, you will need FileZilla if you're trying to upload different kind of um, web pages that you'll be developing and you want to make it to an actual server. So files it as an FTP client so that you can just move all your files to the actual server. So once you start Apache, then you will need to go to my computer, that's all where your files will be saved, for ZAMP. And then you go to ZAMP and htdoc. So make sure you know exactly where you're saving your files, because if this link is wrong, then basically you won't be able to retrieve any of the files. So these are all my documents that I'm using at the moment um, to, for testing and everything. Um, so make sure that it's under htdocs, everything linked uh, basically with CSS, with HTML, you, have, you should have a dedicated folder where you're saving everything. So my one is under teaching right now and we'll start with, um, well you already know about the HTML because most of you have already aware of what HTML is and the basic. So I won't, go, I won't give you the example of HTML right now. We we'll go through the, the first one. This is the the ZAMP, and the HTML file has been saved on this specific folder. So as you can see, this is without CSS, without any JavaScript, just a simple example. But it's running on my local machine. It's not in a browser. It's not, not online. It's just on my local server. The next example, if well, this one, if you want to just view the page source. It's a simple Hello World program. Um, like I said earlier, Dr. Nada has introduced all the different tags that you're using for the headings, the paragraphs, and obviously everything has to go under your body and um, the body tag. And also, I didn't include the head tag here. The next uh, example I'll give you is the one with. Um, the CSS, which is how to separate your different um, your different HTML file and the uh, different styling. So for this example, I'll just use again a really simple example. So if we see the page source, there are two kinds of CSS that you can use uh, in programming. So one has the inline um, use of CSS, which which is the example here. So as you can see, everything for my CSS is included in my HTML file. So the, the first part is how to save a body will have a background color of H tag. Um, this is a, just a blue color. And then the, the heading will be centered, and then we'll have an orange color. The paragraph will be of this kind of different um, uh, 20 px. <laughs> And this is the inline one. The, the other way you can do use CSS for more advanced level is usually you can have a different file of CSS linked to HTML. So you have a folder on only HTML files, and then you have a separate folder for CSS, which have to have a link within the HTML file and link it to the CSS. So this is a better way of doing CSS styling 
for more advanced level when, for example, if you have like, um, like all the websites that's being used nowadays, they don't have <coughs> it in line, they have it in a separate folder, and then you <coughs> pull it from the HTML file, the main HTML index file. So let's have an example now of a JavaScript, because most of you are not really aware of what JavaScript is and what sort of things JavaScript is capable of doing. So let's take that example. You can find this example on Code Academy and um, Dublin Free School as well. What JavaScript does is actually <coughs> interacts with a browser. So the client comes and tells you, OK, I want to do something. Um, then the functionality will be running inside the browser, okay, and then the browser does some processing in it and then displays something for you. So it's not within the client side, it will be done within the browser. So that's why when you deal with JavaScript, you need to take care of different kind of browsers. There's not something that is running in IE8 will be running maybe in IE7 and will be running in uh, Chrome or different uh, browser that you're using. So you need to make sure when you're doing your testing and doing, you need to make sure that you are using JavaScript for a specific browser. Okay? So if we click on that, it will just show you the date and time and it's fetching the data from the library again from JavaScript libraries. If you want to have a look at the page source, so again, uh, like that has explained before, it will look like an HTML page. So you have all the different tags for HTML. The JavaScript comes into the function. So for example, here you have a button type, which, which is a button. And then the functionality is when you click on the button, so button on click, it gets the element ID, which is here, I call it as demo. So demo here will, is the whole paragraph. So the ID is demo, so when I call, uh, I'm calling this ID, it will tell you to display the date, and it's fetching the data from the library. So that's the page that you'll be getting. There are different kinds of uh, other things you can do. So if I go on, uh, um, on the code academy, so So for example, this one is an interactive JavaScript file. Um, so many of you maybe are not aware of whether you're using it, but it comes in everyday life. For example, if I'm running this code, it will tell the browser, can you just Yeah, go. So again, it tells the browser um, that I'm feeling awesome. And uh, once I press on OK, it will tell you something else. So I'm ready to go. That means there, there, are, there have been some codes that we've been writing and telling you to confirm. So was, did any one of you here knew that you know, we get these kind of messages every day and every website? But I'm sure most of you didn't know if that was JavaScript. No? It's, it's nice to know now, so every, every time you find something when you're actually allowing cookies, allowing other uh, kind of saving passwords, this will click you now, you'll know this is JavaScript. So that's how it looks like. So I would recommend to go on uh, Code Academy again, try to do all the examples, because really, it will really give you an idea of how JavaScript is, what are the different kind of functionalities. You can do the activities, get the badge, and that will be really useful for you. Start with JavaScript on Code Academy and also the <coughs> school. They have like several kind of examples. So let's take another example again of JavaScript. It, this one will, again, it will, this is a different function. It's known as a prompt. Uh, so you, you write prompt, what is your name? Put in the bracket. And then when you click on save and submit, this is the, uh, the window that will appear again. So if I say, it tells me what is Ubuntu because I've been programming it of what is Ubuntu. So 
I just say Linux. And here I go, it tells you Linux. And in uh, JavaScript, you have something known as Boolean as well. So the next uh, level will be about Boolean. So Boolean is whether something is true or no, or not. Um, So you have numbers for different uh, quantities, you have the strings that you can use, same as HTML, you have Boolean to return whether something is true or not. And um, just go on, uh, on Code Academy and then you follow all the instructions that they give you so that you can work out a different kind of functionalities that they provide you with. Okay. So this is just to give you an idea of what JavaScript is. The next more important and interesting one is jQuery Mobile, because I know most of you now um, is into the mobile phone, you see something going on the trend now, uh, uh, anyone wants to program something which will be adaptable to all the different kind of mobile devices. So jQuery Mobile is a platform to start with because it allows you to do it on different kinds of devices, like I said earlier. Um, you have a specific um, website, the <coughs> official one, so you go to jQuerymobile.com, I'll show you in a bit. And uh, let's see an example. So jQuery Mobile, it just gives you the theme and the different kind of functionalities that you see on your mobile, for example, even now, sometimes you will go on a mobile site or you download, um, you download a specific native app from your from the, uh, Apple Store or Android Store, they still make use of jQuery Mobile. So this is something that you wouldn't know, but <laughs> different kind of native apps now um, have some functionalities of web tools. So they use web tools and then at the end, they program it as a native app. So I have personally the Lloyd's um, mobile app running on my iPhone, and Lloyd's are using HTML5 and jQuery Mobile, and they translated it to a native app at the end. But when you, after I show you the examples of how jQuery Mobile look, you will be uh, able to identify whether this is a native app. You can just browse from different, through different kind of apps you have on your mobile. You'll, you'll see the difference, because it's only about the theme, how they put, use HTML5, and how we arrange everything together. So I'm going to show you a really, really simple example on uh, jQuery. Again, it's running on my local host. So are you familiar with this, any of you? Did you know this is HTML5? But the theme that is being used is something that came, came from jQuery Mobile. So it, it wasn't me who the theme would be there for my title is no CSS, all the CSS is being fetched already from jQuery Mobile Platform and libraries. This is an example of just a Hello World program. If we go and view the page source, so again, like I just had explained to you earlier, you will need to put all the three different, um, the first three lines. So one of them is to adapt to different browsers, one of them is to fetch the CSS from the library, and um, the other one is to be able for you guys to take any fetch changes that you're using and to be able to get it from a specific library. So this could, when I say jQuery Mobile 1.1, this means this is the version of 1.1. There are different kind of versions going on every few weeks, they're releasing new kind of um, uh, version, so make sure you don't or don't use the latest version. Make sure you use maybe one or two before, because there are fewer bugs. Um, again, this is just a deep tags to show you the different kind of pages and headers used, and uh, this is the example of um, of the listed and unlisted. That uh, example, like I showed earlier. <coughs> so have you seen? There's no CSS here. I didn't use any CSS to program. Use like you saw the different kind of list. So it's just all done by uh, jQuery Mobile, which is really amazing. Uh, so let's go to the jQuery Mobile um, official website. Mm -hmm. 
So when you go to jQuery Mobile, if you want to try some demos, I'll show you. So you go on the demo link. You, it will appear here when you just link to, uh, when you go to the mobile site. So here it goes. So you have different kind of navigation, different kind of button use. Let's go into the button one. So all of these are jQuery Mobile. So it's already done for you. You don't need to do any formatting. Obviously, you can add different kind of formatting, for example. If you want to change the color, this is the basic one. So if you want to change the color, this can be done as well. So if I go to all the examples here, dialogues, checkboxes, there's one, the header toolbar. So here you go. This is the header toolbar that I've been using before. You can have the source as well. So if you view the source here, you can use that in your HTML. So it's really good because you can have different kind of interactivity and other themes as well. Examples of the button, so everything again is already predefined. And you have all the view source. So this is a good way where to start with. So you download it on your exam and then afterwards you go on the jQuery official website and get all the sources and also you try the examples on the um, Code Academy. Okay, so the other example I wanted to show you, this is one of our projects that we've, that we've done with jQuery Mobile. Um, again, it's an app that can be run on different browsers. So remember when I showed you that link uh, the line where we said width that you had to input the first line within the, the, um, within the, um, the code, that means it would be adaptable to different kind of browsers. So for example, if you take this link here, you run it on your phone or your tablet or anything, it will resize it. What I mean by resizing is, for example, if I'm going to Code Academy website, which is just a normal website, and I try to resize it, So if I do that, I'm resizing it. Okay, let's just take this example here. So like I said, this is just a normal page without any jQuery mobile. So if you're trying to resize this, it doesn't work. Can you see? So there's something here missing. It, it just cut the page in the middle. But whereas with jQuery mobile, the good thing is it resizes to all the different kind of browsers. So for example, if we resize this one, it adapts to the different width. So this is why we, need, we have to add this line of code. So that example is just uh, a mobile app that we've been developing uh, with Dotanada and uh, for London Fusion. It just enables you to look for different kind of applications. Um, everything has been done for the, um, with the jQuery mobile. And uh, it links to the actual database and everything. So it allows you to sort of take um, different all the application that's related to cancer, to different um, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and COPD, um, or all the all the different kind of mobile application in the market have been saved in a database, and it allows you to request to search for a particular application and to see if any studies have been done. This is just an example to show you that everything has been done on jQuery Mobile. So, for example, if you go and uh, search for here. I've searched cancer. It gives me a list of all the cancer application and from which source, from whether it's from Nokia, um, the developer, and everything. So this is just to show you how it will look like. Um, there. So you can add different kind of colors as well. This is the basic themes, the official themes from jQuery Mobile. So you can add different kind of things. You can do. According to different taste. Okay. 
I'm sure that we have to the code or something for uh, Is it for, for Land and Fusion? Yeah, I just... Uh, yeah, I have a code, but it's a bit complicated because... Um, I can show you... So this is the code to search when asked. Again, it looks like an HTML file with a dot type tag, and you have the head, the title. Again, the script that you have, that you need, and then all the functionalities I've been using PHP within it for the searching, obviously, because it's the functionality, so you can't use jQuery Mobile for that. So you, you have to use like a proper server side language, which is PHP I've been using for this one. Uh, so you search for category, the name, it gets, it's getting access to the student account, because I've put this one to an actual server. So it's actually running live, so any of you who wants to access it can, can do it now. Um, and then it shows you all the results, so the query that I'm looking for, searching the results from the query, and then display echo is for displaying. You've done PHP last week, so I'm sure all of you know now what's echo. And again, just print. So what am I asking to print? In, this is the printing. So in the in the form of the table that I showed earlier, and displaying in the different kind of rows. So this is a long, I mean, so many codes here for you, you won't understand everything. But just to give you an idea of how it works. Anything else, Santa? No, I mean, just to show yeah. you that the same principle you have for the JQ, you know, while you have these four points that are saying. Um, you know, at the header there, and then it's an HTML file, as you can see, with a bit of interactivity using uh, jQuery Mobile, with some PHP, because you need to have a database connected to this app, so you need to queue something, say, uh, something to the database, and so on. So, just, uh, just as an example of uh, our app application. And of course, you need to package it later on, like using PhoneGap or something like that. Uh, to no, PhoneGap, there's another thing. Have you heard of PhoneGap? Any of you? No, PhoneGap? Well, PhoneGap is something uh, which is really interesting, but still in the version where people are still doing so, so much work on it. So PhoneGap, what happens is you can use PhoneGap when you have already designed your page in HTML5 and CSS and jQuery Mobile. And then there's a tool known as PhoneGap. You can have a look at it. So you, it's a tool where you can input all your HTML files into it, and they, do, they process it automatically, and it makes it into a native app within iOS, within Android, and Windows Phone. So it's something you could try as well, because it's really interesting. I did it myself for Lot of Fusion. So I used all my codes that you just saw here. I went onto PhoneGap, created an account for myself, input all the codes, there are just a couple of changes that you have to make uh, because of the linking of the pages, but overall it, it is a tool that allows, it, allows you to take your HTML file and make it into native app for different platforms, and it's a free tool. So this is something you might consider maybe in two, three years time when you're doing a your final project. Yeah, so basically if you develop it this way, it will be just a link to your server. But if you want to make it like look like <coughs> a native app. as a native app, so you need another package to take all your code here from the web and using PhoneGap can create if you want iOS, it would create a native for iOS and you can install it as an app from your yeah. so it's just a standalone app for iOS, for um, for Android and for other phones. However, as it is, it's a link to a website. So when you press on it on your uh, on your phone, you press on an app. Behind it, there is a link to a website, which is this. This is the application because yeah. it's a web app. So yeah. companies usually do that because obviously they can't publish it to to the stores. So for example, for Apple stores and 
they can't usually, they can't publish it, they can't send it for approval, because it's just a link, they can't do that. So that's the reason why tone gap comes into play, because then once they have a, once they have an native app, then obviously it's going to be able to reach customers easier rather than just a website. And it's more, you know, it's more reliable when you take an app from the actual app store. So that's the reason why they do that. And so the, the tool is phone gap and there's something known as titanium accelerator. These are the two main ones that people are using now to merge their web out into a real community app. Okay, do you have any questions so far? So uh, we will leave you with your activity to do on uh, Code Academy. I I recommend that you do it on JavaScript if you want on JQ Mobile. It's up to you. And again, it's uh, fun. And I will see you next week for the feed.